Alright, we are back on gaming. I want to say this right now before I get started. I will be streaming today between the times of 5 and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. So if you don't have anything else to do, please come over to the channel. I'll put the link in the info bar. Support, you know, donate. You know it's for a good cause. 100% of the proceeds go to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. I'll be doing a two-hour block of Mario Kart 8. I am sure that the rage will be there, okay? Now, I will put like this. I wanted to talk about this specific issue today in gaming. And I know you already read, you know, read the title of this, so you know how this is going to go down. Ever since Amir Sarkeesian has decided to do that horrendous third video, all right, we saw that so much reaching, we've seen a number of feminists come out and talk about the gaming community and its industry. And for those who don't know, not too long ago, the first shot that was taken was towards Street Fighter. That's right. A feminist came out and said that Street Fighter is, it treats women badly and that they treat them like objects. That's what she said. Now, little does she know, or she didn't think about it at first, was that Street Fighter is a very stereotypical game. First off, it's a fantasy fighter, okay? Because she talks about the body types, you know, of the women in the game. And I'll get into that a little bit later, all right? And other people do as well. But she has to understand that Street Fighter is the stereotype of the world warrior, okay? So you're going to see a number of people. It doesn't discriminate, oh, it's just it's treating women badly or it's treating men. Because men are just as bad. And she said the same thing. She said men also have bad uh, body types as well. You know, they have these all bulging muscles and... Regular men can't compete with that, you know? And I'm sure women feel the same way when it comes to women can't compete with those, you know, body types of, you know, women in fighting games. However, we know that there are many dif uh, different various, you know, body types in fighting games. We know this. However, her comments aren't what bothered me the most. What really inspired me to do this video was the white knighting that goes on with it. That's right. And here's one example of what's going on because, I mean, look like this. If we're going to take a shot at the fighting game community, if we're going to talk about Street Fighter, that's the one we're going to do first, then I guess I'm going to put in my coins so we can get this fight started. Let's go, crazy! So we'll start off first with the guy who comes to her defense and talking about the fighting game community and fighting games in general, who has no idea what he's talking about, clearly, because this is what his first tweet actually said. First off, it's a fighting game. Hence the term fighting. So your competitors are going to train to get stronger, to get faster, to have more skill. Let's get that out of the way first, okay? Now, you talk about men are depicted as strong in all fighting games. So, are you going to tell me that Gen from Street Fighter is depicted as strong? No. Are you going to tell me Choi from King of Fighters is depicted as strong? No. And then you go on to say, you know, that women, you know, are, are first sexy and, and then strong. Really? Because I remember Chun-Li, if anyone remembers Chun-Li... All right, in the original Street Fighter 2, she wasn't part of the original cast, but they added her in. And because she became so popular, because of the fact that she was so fast and strong, it wasn't the fact of just the way she looked. It was a combination that she was so effective in these games that kept her around for all these years. Not to mention, should we talk about Mei from Guilty Gear? You know, a girl, little girl who was fully clothed, who was walking around with a big anchor. Are you going to sit here and tell me that it doesn't take a great amount of strength to use that anchor? See, and this is the problem because he says in fighting games, as in all fighting games do this, he fails to realize just how bad he looks when he does this. So he's already wrong from his first tweet, all right? He's already lost. But let's keep going. Way to dig that hole deeper for yourself. Are you going to sit here and tell me that there's a range of body types? You understand that that is more of a stereotype, right? I mean, Honda is sumo, and, and Dawson is, you know, from India with yoga, and he stretches. You understand, these are elaborate, all right, quite broad stereotypes of the world warrior. It has nothing to do with body types, but if you want to sit here and say that women all have the same body types, are you going to tell me Sakura at a teenage age has the same body type as Armika? Is that what you want to tell me? Are you going to tell me she has the same body type as Chun-Li or an Ibuki or a Charlotte from Samurai Showdown? Do you understand how gross that you're, and I say gross stereotypes, because that's what you've done yourself. You stereotype. Either you haven't played these games, or you haven't paid attention to the actual character designs and body types and actions that these characters do. You do understand it, right? So which one is it? Because you, you pretty much buried yourself already, all right? But let's keep going. So let me get this straight, all right? Because you really, you've really killed yourself here on this one. 
you're going to sit here and tell me that you're going to compare character designs in a fantasy fighter to women in the UFC who mocap their body for a video game? Okay, they're talking about fictional characters. Fictional characters. Am I, am I getting through to you at all? This dude has completely lost it, alright? Have you ever played an RPG? Have you ever? I mean, seriously, I can, I can re recommend you, you know, like, Xenogears or the Final Fantasy series. Or Final Fantasy X and, uh, and, you know, X2 and... Or are we still talking about fighting games? Because if we're talking about fighting games, then we can talk about, you know, Shizu from King of Fighters. You know, Blue Mary from Fatal Fury. We could talk about, you know, Athena from King of Fighters. King, for those who know King, who's a woman, all right? If you know her, her story from, uh, was it the Art of Fighting, all at the King of Fighters with her, uh, was it Confrontation with Yamazaki? If you know the story behind that, you want to talk about robust narratives? Look, as far as I'm concerned, you have no idea what the hell you are talking about. But you just want to white knight these people. That's all it is. You just want to white knight a woman and think that, oh, yeah, I'm on your side. Without doing either any research, playing these games, or researching any facts. And right now, you've made yourself look like a complete idiot. This is all I got to say to you on that. Now that round one is over, the next week, that's right, Giant Bomb hired, for those who don't know, two new writers for their staff. And it just so happened to be white males. And apparently, writer and feminist Samantha Allen had a problem with that. Now, if I would have said something like that, I would have been labeled angry black man, right? But apparently, if pure snow-driven white girl says it, it's okay. Yeah, double standards. But we'll talk about that later, okay? However, the response that she got was actually one of logic. Seems legit and equal, right? I mean, hey, if this is competition to getting a job. You know, the person who is most qualified, no matter black, white, whatever, they should get it. They deserve it if they're the most qualified for the job. However, this is her response towards that. Yes, because that's quite adult and quite professional and quite mature of you to respond in that manner. See, this is what I mean is if you want to be treated as an adult or taken seriously, you have to act like one. And when she did that, she opened up the gates of pretty much hell on the internet when it came to gamers. However, white knights came to her defense pretty quickly. This person, Sean Strzok, should be ashamed of themselves for doing that, alright? Once again, not being adult about the thing. You have to understand that Alien Games said, you know, logically, it's whoever is the best qualified for the job. It doesn't matter man or woman. This guy comes along out of nowhere and says, Hey, did you hear that they said that there's no women whatsoever? They didn't say that. Not so whatsoever. We don't know who applied for the job, okay? And I'll also put it like this. Because for Samantha Allen to be so upset about this, she didn't, she didn't apply for the job either. So as far as I'm concerned, people don't really have, a, you know, have room to complain here. But that's just how I see things. I understand that people want equality, but look, you go who's best suited for the job. Not because man or woman, and that's what they did. And this guy's going to try and turn around and say, oh, that no women are, and there's, there's no women whatsoever that are qualified for it. They didn't say that. You're taking their words and you're twisting them and you're trying to get people to believe what you think is fact. And that's wrong of you to do. Like I said, these people want to be, you know, they say that they want a white knight and everything. They're, I believe this, the people who do this stuff, all right, when it comes to like a need and all them, they always point out the trolls and everything. They're, these people are just bad. They are inciting problems, and if you don't believe me, another gamer steps in and says, maybe that person was, you know, more suited for the job. And this was Samantha Allen's response to that gamer. After that, shit hit the fan. Gamers were going off, they were trashing her, they were just harassing her, and you know what? She incited this problem. So as far as I'm concerned, and she had multiple, as you can see, chances to explain her position, and she didn't. All she did was insult people. So she was looking to troll as far as I'm concerned. This is not about anger getting the best of her. No. This is what she did. She had at least two chances. Two. You didn't learn from your first mistake. Now you did it again. So then the community jumped on you. And this was what Samantha Allen had to say to the community afterwards.
So now you want to send a message out to the community saying you leave our precious little games alone. Like, like we're the immature children that jumped all over you out of nowhere. Mind you, you incited this problem. You started this problem. And you gave, you, did, you dished it out, but you couldn't take it. So now all of a sudden, you're going to say, I'm going to take my ball and go home, but you're the ones who look immature for doing so. Instead of handling this like an adult or handling this like a professional, this is the route you went. And guess what? You're not, you know, impenetrable to the internet. Anybody who acted like this in the gaming community when it came to, you know, trashing people, guess what? People would jump all over them too. So I don't know if this is your first time, which clearly it's not, given your history, all right? But it seems like you think that you're just above all that. And I'm going to get into that later, too. So as far as I'm concerned, you did a disservice to all women, all right, for doing that and to your cause. This is all I have to say to you. Now on to the next competitor. That's right. We're going to go round three. Lee Alexander comes out and speaks about the giant bomb issue. And in usual ignorant fashion, this is what she says. So you get on Giant Bomb for not being a modern frontier, for not hiring a woman at this given time, all right? Not that they won't do it in the future or that they're discriminating in general because we haven't seen any proof of discrimination, okay? However, you say that women wouldn't want to work there in the first place. So you're getting on him for not being a modern, you know, modern frontier, you know, a trailblazer, but you don't think women want to work there in the first place. So what are you trying to get at? First off, do you know all women? No? You don't? Okay. And you say that women wouldn't want to work there in the first place. You know what type of women would want to work there? Women who love video games. Women who want to be in the industry. That's the women who want to do it. There are a number of them already doing it. So it's amazing to hear this coming from someone like her. But you know what? I'm not surprised. If you look at these people's resumes, it's absolutely ridiculous. Samantha Allen, when I showed you not too long ago, if you go back and look at her blog, she talks about how she hates all men. That's right. She hates all men. So as far as I'm concerned, technically, if you're going to go against, you know, men at this point, I don't know how you keep a job if you hate a good amount of gender, okay? But that's hate speech. That's what that is. And you're trying to advocate hate speech. And then people jump on you and you get mad. Same thing here with, you know, Alexander. You have to be kidding me that this is something that you think is going to happen. It is sad. That we are seeing this. And these are the people who are in our industry. But she doesn't stop there. No, 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 she doesn't stop there. Let's keep going and see what else, you know, other things that spews out of her mouth. Or should I say, off her fingertips on the Twitter. Hold up. So now it would be a shame. So first you want to blame the entire community. You're blaming the whole entire community, okay? Then it would be a shame to see an energetic, you know, writer being put in that community. Because how dare women that you're trying to push to get a job have a job? How dare they have a job in that, you know? It would be a shame to see a woman as talented wasted, really? You know how I many women writers that write these scripts for these games or anything? Are you serious that you're going to sit here and tell me that it would be a shame? You're pushing for women to get a job. Now you're saying it's a shame that you'd be wasted on the job. And, and then you said before that, that, you know, hey, they wouldn't want to work there anyway. Even though you don't know all women. Do you understand how bad this looks for you? No, you don't. Because then you say this afterwards. Look how pathetic this is. You see this? For you to say everything that you write is better than the giant bomb staff, well then prove it. That's all you have to do is prove it. It just seems like it's, a, it's a, a shameless plug for your own self, to be quite honest. And you're trying to use the platform of feminism. That's, that's what it seems like, I'm just saying. And then you say, by haters. Uh, nobody was talking to you before that. You spoke up first. Meaning, you're the hater at this point. That's what it means. It means you're the one who's initiated. Once again, you initiate this, and then when people jump on you, say, by haters. Do you know how cliche and how stupid you sound? But no. All right. You know how stupid you sound? You need more proof about this, people? Because then if you go on her blog, this is the first thing she says about feminism. So she's telling people, all right, men, she's telling people that this is how all women feel, okay? Men are not allowed to ask women for a solution. So what you're saying is 
you should just go ahead and complain and fight and curse people out and call them haters and everything else, but you don't want to come up with a solution. So you're going to waste your time pushing negativity, because that's what it is, because you're not fighting for equality. Pushing negativity and sitting here and saying we shouldn't ask for a solution, because, I mean, let's be honest here, people. In this world, that's what we're supposed to do. When we see a problem, we identify a problem. We come together and we try to find a solution so that we can evolve and move forward from it. We don't stay in one spot and try to sit here and plug ourselves and think it's all about us. That's childish, as far as I'm concerned. But it seems like these girls, girls, you know, say girls, not women, because women don't act like this. These are little, spoiled, entitled little girls. That's what this is. Real women take it head on and they say, look, this is what we can try to do. This is, you know, this is who we can try and reach. Instead, they're worried about keeping their fan bases and trying to keep themselves in the limelight on a platform that constantly is failing at this point, and it's going nowhere. And I say that. That's why it's failing, because it's not evolving. It's going in circles. And if you don't believe me, and the type of attitude that she has is the worst, because you should know the company that she keeps. And this is the attitude I'm talking about, the arrogance that I'm talking about, the entitlement. She's going to sit here and tell people to go follow Michael Packer, the very same man that we saw who said he does not know how to communicate with people. He doesn't know how to treat people in lower wage jobs. He treats them like dirt. The very same man that said not too long ago that if you, you, know, if you use ad block, you're a scumbag. That's right. That's what he said on his video. You know, because we should reserve, you know, people who use ad block as scumbags. We should put that in the same category as real scumbags in real life. You know, the killers, the rapists, the terrorists. Yeah, those are scumbags. And you want to put people who use ad block in the same on the same level? This is sad. And not too long ago, she came out on Twitter and said that she could crush people. She could crush them. Really? I would love to hear you talk about my black male privilege because that's what you like to talk about a lot all right male privilege check your privilege at the door please tell me about my black male you know black male living in america privilege i would love to hear that you want to talk about crushing people matter of fact this is all i have to say to you as well on to the next competitor that's right i'm almost finished people don't worry we're almost done however i will say that this guy is caught up with the giant bomb fiasco, but this guy is a 15-year vet in the gaming industry. That's right. So let's see his resume first. And now let's get to his statements. While I agree that the gaming community still has a lot of growing up to do, because we do see a lot of trolling, we do see a lot of fighting, and as far as I'm concerned, gamers keep falling for this type of bait. However, notice he never blames Samantha Allen for her comments on what she said. So he's just going to go right after the gaming community, right from the gate, which is absolutely wrong because they're actually in defense. They, they didn't initiate this, but let's keep hearing what he has to say. So you're calling customers pissheads. Are you serious? Look, you're already losing. All right, You've already stepped in it that quick. And to ban them from the community, I put like this. I've called for bans in community as well, whether it's in the industry or in our own community. But you have to understand, they have to do something horrendous in order to be banned. Something that goes beyond comprehension of why this person did it has to be banned. This of gamers defending what Samantha Allen said because they tried to talk to her logically until she started cursing them out. No, don't tell me they need to be banned. That's absolutely horrible. Did you just say that the gaming community is the 1%? And then to say that it's not useful? No. The gaming community, for us to be in this community, we have a voice. It has always been that way. And to say that it's not useful for anyone, when I have done videos time and time again that have helped influence people to see the way things are, hence why I'm doing this video today, are you going to sit here and tell me that I am the 1%? The 1%? Really? You cannot be that naive to say such a thing. So publishers aren't the problem. Gouging isn't the problem. Corrupt journalists isn't the problem. Oh, wait, you're a journalist, right? Yeah. So all these things to, you know, misinform 
or guide random people who don't have a thought for themselves aren't the problem because, you know, that equates to sales and you still getting paid. It's the gaming community, right? Because we have a voice. That's what's bothering you. It's funny because you're talking about the problem with Samantha Allen and, you know, feminism, but you've used this as a platform to just go against gamers and trying to silence them. So, you say that it's gamers throwing a tantrum. What do you think you're doing right now? It's the pot calling the kettle black. You are your own worst enemy. You are just as bad as who you judge. However, you use the same route that Samantha Allen went because, you know, hey, you know, our precious games. Now you're going to say, when we don't get our lolly, you're going the immature route when you're showing immaturity yourself. You start off with name calling and railroading the community down to bans and silencing people and the call us the 1%. The gaming community has been in unity for a very long time, since the arcade days. That's why people didn't get away with a lot of things, you know, these industry guys. Now that you have all these businesses, these markets, these strategists on how to get people and break people down statistically, and we will talk about that later, I'm telling you we will, okay? Now all of a sudden, when people are waking up and saying, hey, this is becoming a problem in our community, you want to you know, you shut them off. But that's not the, the industry's biggest problem. It's the gamers who are actually smartening up, huh? Okay. So to clarify, he likes individuals, but he doesn't like us as a collective because us as a collective have power. That's what it comes to. Us as collective and consumers get the word out and say, hey, if we don't like something, this is how it's going to go down. We're going to let you know. And you say how it doesn't help people. Really, you want to talk about, should we talk about how, you know, the industry, how a lot of them say, you know, feedback is really good. Without a community, you wouldn't have that. Without a gaming community, you wouldn't make the numbers that you have. You wouldn't have niche fan bases, all right, to keep, you know, titles afloat. So for you to say that communities, the gaming community as a whole is bad, either you're out of touch with community for 15 years, or you're just seeing things objectively and possibly blind to some things, I would say. But your statements come off as completely ignorant and screaming at the community instead of taking on the topic at hand. So this is what I have to say to you. Yeah, our community is just so bad that we should not be taken seriously, right? Because we don't have any power. It doesn't help anyone, right? Well, I have something to report. And this is going to be a real, you know, real big cherry on top. Hearthstone. For those who don't know, opened up a men's only tournament, all right, for their esports, video games, yeah, esports, here we go again, all right? And people were wondering why they weren't allowing women to join this tournament. And Hearthstone said, you know, well, in regular sports, men and women are divided, you know, and we thought it would be the same way as, you know, in our esports. No. The reason men and women are divided in physical activity sports and such as basketball, like the WNBA and NBA, is because of the physical difference in attributes. That's it. However, there are sports that men and women do play together, all right? I mean, should we talk about Danica Patrick and racing with the big boys? See, this is what I don't like. And, and like I said, you can go outside right now and find a woman playing basketball with guys. Not a big deal. I've played with a number of women playing basketball and are good. I don't see the problem. However, this is what they're trying to sell you. Now, mind you, we've talked about this before where they had women-only tournaments. And everyone said, wait till they try a men's-only tournament. There's going to be a backlash. And when that happened, huge backlash. But here's the thing. Men and women in the gaming community came together and stopped it. That's right. So now, Hearthstone has a tournament that's open to both men and women at the same time. They're not banning women anymore. So pretty much they were trying to ban women to get them to play in their own thing. This segregation that we are seeing as of late is pathetic. Mind you, this was never in the community. Mind you, we didn't even have a term for women in gaming. It wasn't gamer girl or whatever. We didn't have that. They were just gamers. They were people who liked to play games just like us. Then all of a sudden, we started seeing all these titles thrown down. So now we see gamer girl. Now we see black gamer or whatever. You know, insert whatever YouTube name with black in it, you know, with not with just black in it, but like Negro or whatever, or angry black man or whatever. It doesn't matter. We're showing that we're starting to separate a lot of our community. And it's sad. We're putting them in divisions. That's not how this was. And I know a lot of people who do those things, they say, oh, it's for entertainment, but you have to understand it. You're pushing stereotype. You are. 
And you probably weren't thinking about the time either, but it doesn't matter now. It's already, you know, done and done. But understand that this is something that has helped segregate. Now that you have statistics and you have all these, these businesses have all these labels for you, it, you have to understand our gaming community was never like that. It never was. Until now, this network era. Because that's what it is. The network era. It's not gaming community anymore. It's the network era. Because that's all you see. It's so easy to contact somebody, to reach out to somebody. And that's all it takes. You know? And then it can be labeled as whining or crying or whatever. Or you shouldn't be taken seriously because you're this or that. It was never like that. And this is what happens when you keep the gate open. When you try to reach out to more masses, instead of sticking with your community, you try to reach out. And then you bring these crazy people in. Like Lee Alexander, like Samantha Allen, like Anita Sarkeesian. Pushing hate. That's what it is. It is not about solution. It is not about healthy conversation. Obviously, you can see those examples I've shown today. Not about healthy conversation. You know, a platform to say, hey, let's talk about this on a good scale. We have tried to contact a number of people as of late to debate on this issue. And all of them say yes, and then afterwards they say no. They'd rather stick to writing because they can't communicate or they can't articulate right there live. They want to stick to writing. And then they said, we expect you to write as well. We try to you know, promote you to go write. No, I can get on camera and say what I have to say and show examples. I don't have a problem with that. But it seems like this is what's going to keep happening. Like I said, it is an endless cycle. Until we start making videos to open up conversation on how things can get better instead of putting out flaws and saying you're an idiot or this person's trolling me and blah, blah, blah. This is not going to get better. And I can keep doing this all day till I'm blue in the face. Till about as blue as my shirt. Okay? And say, hey, this person's wrong. And I'm showing you this not because I'm bagging on you, but to show you the examples of how bad our community has become. But it seems like they want to keep this going. If you feed into that hate, then they win. If they go and make ridiculous examples of things and reaching and you react, oh my God, I'm, I got to call you this or this, they win. The best thing you can do is beat them with this. That's it. That's all it takes.